Is your child a daydreamer? Do they have a hard time zoning in, getting things done, staying focused and on task? Well, this video is for you then because we are gonna chat through how to get your child to focus. If you feel like you have a ton of ADD, ADHD moments with your kids, let's chat. So maybe your child does have a diagnosis, maybe they don't. Either way, you're gonna appreciate the tips in this video, so let's dive in. If you don't know who I am, I am Jillian. I am a licensed clinical professional counselor. My business, Find the Wall Counseling, not only helps parents to improve their kids' behavior, but it also increases their confidence in their parenting, gets rid of guilt, and restores peace to their hearts and to their homes. Now, I know that your child gives you a headache about getting things done, staying focused, staying on task, whether that's with homework, with chores, or listening to what you have to say, following through on their responsibilities. This is something that certainly steals your peace. And this how-to series that I'm doing is all about the top things in Google search where I typed in, how do I get my child to? And you know what, focus was one of the top ones right after listening, which if you have not checked out the listening video, um, I will put the link in here for you to be able to access that. And be sure also to subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date with all of these how-to videos. Now, today is focus, and you're probably wanting me to focus on the topic at hand. So let's jump into this. Now, something that I'm really wanting to drive home during this how-to series is that the first step of how-to is to always learn the why. We want to learn the why behind something that's going on so that we know how to properly address it. If you don't know the why, the how-to is just not going to be pertinent or really going to meet your needs in the way that you need it to. So why is your child not focusing? Do they actually have some kind of diagnosis, ADD, ADHD? autism spectrum, something else, anxiety, is there a diagnosis that could be diverting their attention and making it harder for them to follow through and, and do the things that they need to do? Here's a funny thing about ADHD or ADD. Um, so attention deficit disorder or attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. It makes it seem like kids can't pay attention, right? There's a deficit. But really what's going on with this diagnosis is your child's brain is able to process so many things at once. Kids who have ADD or ADHD have incredible minds that can process an unbelievable amount of information, which means that they don't really have a deficit of attention. They have a huge capacity for it. But that attention is diverted to all sorts of little things all over the place. And so their world is a lot more busy than someone without that type of a diagnosis. So they're taking in what's going outside, what's going on downstairs, what's going on in their body, what's going on in the room, what's what's the lighting, what's the temperature, what's what are they feeling? They're taking in so much stimulus that it's really hard for them then to pay attention or focus on something very specific. Now, if something really piques their interest or they really love it, they have a large capacity to take a lot in. And so if they're really engrossed in something and enjoy it, they absolutely can pay attention because they have the ability to take in a lot. But 
when it's something that they're just interested in, something they really don't want to do, all of a sudden they're taking in so much information from all over that it's really hard for them to zone in and focus. So it's just extremely heightened if they have some kind of a diagnosis. Now, kids can do this regardless. If they are disinterested in something, they can start to try to you know, look at other things, pay attention to other things, look around the room, daydream. Maybe your child's extremely creative or brilliant and they just love being with their own thoughts and in their mind and in their imagination vill, right? That is another reason why a child might have a hard time focusing because they're just so creative or intelligent. Perhaps they, like I said, are disinterested in something they don't like maybe they're really worried about something or excited about something. There's something that's preoccupying their mind and it's hard for them to focus on homework or chores or something that they've been asked to do. And maybe even there are some improper expectations that you have on them in terms of what they're actually able to do in terms of sustaining attention and focus. So there's, you know, this idea out there that for every year old you are, that's how many minutes of attention that you can really truly sustain. That's a great number to really search for, um, to kind of start with, but it may be that your 10 year old can't focus for 10 minutes, maybe they can only focus for seven. And that's okay because that's their baseline. We don't need to compare them to other people. What's realistic for your child? Having proper expectations for them is extremely important in terms of you feeling like they're actually able to focus or pay attention. If you think they're able to or should be able to focus for 30 minutes, but the reality is only 10, well, then you're thinking your child can't focus or is inattentive when really they may be very developmentally appropriate and, and in track with what's realistic for their age. So maybe it's that you need some realistic expectations, not so much that your child's not able to focus. We need to know why there's a sense of your child not being able to focus, not being able to pay attention, because that's going to determine how you address the issue. If your child has anxiety or is excited and preoccupied with something, then you're going to address their inattentiveness very differently than if they're just really disinterested and could care less about what they have to do or if there are tons of distractions around them, or if your expectations are too high, or maybe expectations too low, also possible in this world. So really figure out what is the reason behind their inattention. Now, let me just go through a few tips that you can use that will help kids to focus a little bit more uh, regardless of you know what your why is these are some things that will address a bunch of different whys so that if you can identify the why and then put this tip towards that this is going to help your situation so maybe there's just too much for them to do at once maybe they are feeling overwhelmed that they have a lot to do, they don't know where to start, they're really disorganized in their mind, and it just seems like a big, big task and they don't wanna tackle it because it's overwhelming. If this is the case, breaking things down for them in realistic chunks is going to be extremely helpful and freeing for them. This does a few things. First of all, it makes it not so big and intimidating. It's something that they can manage, something that they know they can accomplish, and something within that amount of time that you know they're able to exert some attention and focus. And so they're not maxing out over um, that specific amount for them. So if you know they can focus really well for 10 minutes, or for five minutes, give them a chunk 
of work to do that takes that amount of time. And then not only does this give them something that they can realistically accomplish, but then they are making progress and they can track it. They can come to you and let you know that they accomplished something. And then they have that tangible progress. They have that, look, I did something. I was able to complete something. This increases their confidence, gives them a little bit more motivation, and lets them know that they are tackling this big, big looming project maybe that's on their minds and ahead of them and that they're able to get through it and to do well. So make sure that you're praising during those chunks being finished and helping them to determine what they can do next. Just telling them, you know, do a little bit and then and then take a break or just do what you think you can. That's not going to be enough for them. They need your help, whether they are in first grade or in 11th grade. They need your help and encouragement to be able to break things down for them, to know what's realistic and appropriate for them, and to get that feedback from you that you're proud of them for accomplishing something, and for them to be able to check off something on their to-do list is really encouraging and reassuring for them. So definitely encourage you to chunk things for them. Also, make sure that you are encouraging them to do work during a proper time and in a proper environment. So maybe when your child comes home, they're still buzzing with productivity. So you know that that's the best time for them to get their work done. Or maybe the best time for them to get work done is when there's a lot less going on at home and it's late at night. So them coming home is a great time for them to take a nap. And yes, that could be for a seven-year-old or a 17-year-old. They can come home and take a nap and rejuvenate, get a snack, decompress. Maybe that is something that they need to be able to be more productive later on. If you know they're going to stay up late, if you know that they're going to do better later on, let them take a break, let them recuperate. But if you know that they come home and they knock things out better, let's stay with that and get them on track. So figure out what their best optimal time is and pursue that. And you know, that that's something that you might want to ask them about. Give them the option. When do you want to do your homework? That can be freeing for them and make them feel like they have a little bit more power and control in the situation and not fight so much when they get to choose when they do their homework. So, and then definitely set up the environment for them. Make sure they have a space with few distractions. That might mean that you have to police technology a little bit or, you know, help them to create a space in their room that is going to be appropriate or somewhere else in your home. Maybe doing their work in their room isn't a good idea because that's where they sleep and they need to associate their room with sleep and their homework space with homework. Um, if you're asking them to do some kind of a chore and they keep getting distracted, maybe some of those distractions need to be taken away. Or maybe they need to be given a certain amount of distraction to help them get things done too. So maybe listening to music is something that helps them to actually concentrate a little bit better when they're doing chores. So allowing them that music can help them to focus a little better and give them positive input in terms of stimulus instead of other st stimulus that might distract them otherwise. Um, also, kids are constantly getting stimulus input. And so it may be that you need to help them to cultivate, practice, being in an area where there is no stimuli. This is hard. And I could just sit here and not talk. No, your computer didn't freeze. I really just sat there and didn't talk. It's awkward to be in silence. And I wasn't even in silent that long. Your child needs to be able to be comfortable in silence. So if they're not able to focus 
if they feel like they constantly need things to entertain them, maybe they need some time to unplug and to cultivate entertaining themselves and being with their own thoughts and focusing on things that don't have to do with media, that don't have to do with flashy, wonderful, in your face kind of things, right? Maybe you need to help them to really build up their ability to be in an environment with a lack of stimuli so that they're able to, you know, work those brain muscles, if you will, to be able to sustain attention and focus without constant media input. So that is something that could truly be a game changer for your kiddos. Now, another thing is if they are distracted by things going on, if they are excited about things, worried about things, upset about things, just be in touch with what's going on in their world. Make sure that you're having those conversations with your child. And if you have a teenager, I know this can be tough. Sometimes it's tough for boys to share things with parents, right? Um, you may have a really quiet child who doesn't want to answer your questions. Try to cultivate moments with them where they're sharing what's going on in their heart, in their world. Ask good questions. Get rid of yes or no questions. Ask questions that pique their interest. Ask questions that are less intimidating for them. Get them to talk about things they're interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly about, hey, so how are things going between you and your friends? Or what kind of things are you worried about these days? You might get a, I don't know. But if you ask them something they're interested in, you're going to get them in the practice of sharing things with you. And so some of those other things might come out in time if you just practice being in touch with their world and letting them know you care about their life, what they're interested in, and then you will be more connected to them and be able to help them through maybe some of those things that are distracting them and get some of those things off their chest before they go back to whatever it is they're supposed to be doing. Now, if your child doesn't care about the thing that they need to get done, which is probably pretty much almost always the case when you are working with your child and focusing and getting them to do something, they're probably disinterested. So what are they interested in? Or what would they rather be doing. You can highlight what they are missing out on for them to be able to get motivated to get whatever they need done, done so they can move on to something that they are looking forward to. So kind of the carrot mentality, put that carrot in front of their nose to say like, hey, I know that you don't like this, but you're missing out on an opportunity to do this. Um, give them that carrot, break it up in chunks for them to be able to get to that carrot and help them to know what they are missing out on by dragging their feet. Some kids need to learn the hard way. And so you guys are going to battle for them to maintain focus, but you can get there, rest assured. If you have questions about how your specific child can sustain focus, Throw them in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to make sure to get future videos on this how-to series. Thank you for listening and you have a great rest of your day and get your kiddo to focus.